By the way, these are all stocked here at Westlake for the most part, all the interfaces that we'll cover. So um, any other questions for Brian specifically, or you want to stay in uh, a little after we're going to do some meet and greet as well? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, while we're There's going. There's one in the back right there, gentlemen, right here. <coughs> yes. There's the microphone right next to you. So we're just looking at one insert here. So You're looking at one stack, three and four, ma gone, linked in stereo right. mode. So we can, you can only see one at a time then, correct? You can see... Well, two at a time. You can see there, right. two... Of, well, in, right now you're seeing two at a time. In me, terms of... Uh, yeah, let me, let me uh, swap with you. Sure. If you want to... You're going to get a trip. Yeah, so I, I want to see a couple of channels at the <laughs> no, same time. No, no, we're going to... Because we're kind of flipping over to, the, to, the, uh, to this topic anyway. <laughs> So Mark is asking to kind of show all the plugins. I mean, which are he kind of quickly showed the list right here, but there's 21 yeah, that's different all EQs. The... And again, they're kind of as I walked through at the beginning, I walked through some of those. And then right now we have uh, five different compressors. We're adding two more, like we're starting to add them this week. Um, let's, and, and there's going to be even more. But, but I want to show you this workflow trick here for first of all. I can detach any menu by holding click, uh, holding control and clicking. And so now if I want to say I'll put that on a third desktop, I can have my routing on one page and my effects on another. And then if I want to say, oh, but I want to detach five and six and I also want to see those, now I can see right now three and four and five and six. Of course, that gets a little crowded. I mean, you can resize all these too, by the way. You can resize them this way. So you can make room for more and just kind of remove them and, and stack them this way if you see where I'm going. So you can view more. It's pretty powerful and pretty flexible and pretty much crashes the mirrors, the mirror displays, partly because we modified this to have so much user power and that's i think really really honestly what we're what we're facing today, and viewing something like way. this uh, if you just close it sorry if you just close it it marries back to the see how it just glued back to the original panel it was in go ahead brian sorry uh so if i'm doing like a live broadcast i would do something like this where i would always be looking at the the master mix bus going out to make sure that i'm in the right zone with the output and then i would also be looking at like the lead vocal compression so I would have multiple uh, windows like that open all at the same time on another screen. So that'd be a good example of of that. A user for, application. For yeah. They can, they can live on a separate screen. They can be on the same screen. You can control tab through them. Um, if you put them on, you you wouldn't put them right now on the Pro Tools screen. Right now, yet, okay? If I was on the same window or the same desktop, I would flip through Pro Tools back and forth like this, which is, you know, Command Tab. But if I, uh, but no, they wouldn't reside within the Pro Tools. In this case, I find this, the way that Brian was sort of showing them today, which we just sort of threw on him today, by the way. So some of the, yeah, Brian just got the unit connected a week ago and created <laughs> yeah. all of these presets over the weekend. <laughs> yeah. So the user, and never had a crash. So the usability yeah, never, yeah. of it, yeah, That's because right. he's not mirroring screens at home, duh. <laughs> but, you know, just so you know, that this is this is really how it's going. These guys are diving right in. And Greg Wells has already made about 20 different presets in the last two weeks, and he's using them. I asked these guys, I asked these guys, make these presets to mimic how you'd use gear in your studio. That's, that's a good scenario, right? If he, show me your vocal chain, Greg Wells, how would you set that up? And then users can have the Greg Wells vocal chain. He puts the Lang in, he puts the uh, 1177, or Fat 76 in, excuse me, guys, and uh, whoever, <laughs> you know, um, he puts that in, that model in, and then, uh, like a SSL style EQ uh, of 4K, uh, and then he puts that on the rack, and he just calls me. Like first, he's like, "I'm getting these texts, like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god." And I pull this up, and he goes, "This, I'm not mimicking. I'm leaving it. This is my new vocal chain." 
He's using these AFX, and it's the usability, it's the sound, the stackability, the fact that he could do things and recall things that he can't do with hardware. It sounds just like hardware. He calls a week later. <laughs> he's had it two weeks he's setting this up, and he says, the 176, I just bought a vintage 175B, just got one. I put this on the chain. There it is. He goes, I'm just, I'll use this. So he's got all of these presets, and then he's mixing into them. So the way you could also mix, and I need to, because we're going to run out of time here, I have to segue into this part of it, because this is the part you're going to hear most people now talk about.